<laughs> I, listen, I, I, uh, I think that there are two stories to be told about the retail trader and the retail investor. And only one of those stories is the meme stocks, the Robin Hood, uh, the, op the frenetic trading in the options market, which was one of the big features of 2021. And that's obviously a very big story. And it's undeniable. Anytime you have 25 million new brokerage accounts opened up inside of 12 months, people are sitting at home, not that much to do. Um, it's, a, it's, it's like it's Tinder. So we, we witnessed that. But at the same time, much less remarked upon and much less noticed because it's, it's glacial and it doesn't make for bombastic headlines while it's taking place. Um, in 2021, ETFs took in a record $950 billion. That's a trillion dollars predominantly going into index funds. You know, if you pull out ARK, and, and uh, some, of the, some of the leveraged ETFs and some of the more thematic stuff, which is in the aggregate still small, a lot of that money went into BlackRock and Vanguard and State Street and into fairly plain vanilla index products. So I don't think it's true that everybody's gambling. And I don't think just because you're retail, you have to act like an ape. Um, but both elements, um, to Michael Santoli's point, bo both of those groups, and some people are both, uh, have stuck around. The data is is clear. Uh, they are not people that were scared out of the market because of inflation. Um, they are not people that hang on the Fed's every word. They are people that recognize that the only way to make it in America is to be an equity uh, investor and to own equity in either your own business or other people's businesses. They, they, they have figured out that that is the secret. And once the secret is out, um, they don't so quickly walk away and find something else to do. So I think the retail investor, to say they're back, is a little bit of a, a, a misnomer. They never left. Okay, so Jeff, we, let's, let's assume or let's make the assumption here that Josh Brown has that scene setter correct and that they never left. If equities are the place to be to create wealth over the long term, are there the retail traders out there who would view this resurgence in meme stocks as a long-term opportunity? Or do you think many of them are in this because that's where the action is right now, and once things calm down, that they're moving on to something else? Well, Dom, I think Josh did a good job of setting the table for sure. But what's interesting about the retail trader, they're really focusing their attention on this type of volatility. But I think this deja vu in the meme stocks has also attracted some of the hedge fund money out there. You see like Bed Bath & Beyond up nearly 200%. Look at the volume just this week, Dom, 75 million on average per day. If you go back a year or two, you're looking at a million, possibly 2 million in volume. So that spike in volume speaks to me that traders have come in. And if I go back to my days at the, the Chicago Board of Trade, when markets were moving so fast in the pits, they actually couldn't keep the prices up to date on the board. They put an F on the board for fast market. I think you have to put an F on the board for some of these meme stocks this week because you are seeing spike in volume. You are seeing attraction. And I think Josh was right. I know, Josh, you love when I say you're right. But I think he was right. This is August, and the retail investor really never left. But now I think you have more attention here. And it seems like if you look at every analyst that comes out in downgrades, let's just keep on talking about Bed Bath & Beyond. I think 53% of all analysts who are clearly overpaid I'll talk about this downgrade. Do you continue to see a downgrade come out like we did on Tuesday with Baird? And boom, you see Bed Bath & Beyond move higher. So there's only a 5% buy rating on the stock, but the volatility, sensational. When you talk about being attracted as a trader, if you can use stops and you can understand that this is gonna continue to be a whipsaw, this is where you wanna be in the month of August when you wait to see what the Fed's gonna do next month, when you wait to see what this longer term stock, but this is not a long term play. This is a ton of fun for the day trader, retail or professional. Okay, so Jeff, let hey, me just, uh, oh, hold uh, on, what, just, Josh, one, wait, just one, wait one second, Josh. Okay, okay so, so Jeff, it seems to me like you're saying among the AMC, Bed Bath & Beyond, and GameStop kind of crew, that, tri that tribunal, so to speak, right? You're only really positive on the Bed Bath & Beyond story, not so much GameStop and AMC Entertainment. 
Well, you depend on what minute of the day, Dom, right? We're seeing this type of volatility. You have to be very nimble and you have to be willing to cut your losses and establish new positions. But if you're trading these actively as a true trader, you're not taking a position. If you want to look at Bed Bath & Beyond and say just three days ago, the market cap was under 400 million and now it's back above a billion, maybe that takeover component has been taken away. But that's a company that's bleeding cash. They have less than $100 million on hand. They have to do a capital raise. So I am not making a long-term thesis or long-term investment in Bed Bath & Beyond. I'm speaking specifically with my trading hat on, not my chief investment officer hat on. All right. So, so Josh, I'm sorry. Back to you. Well, what I wanted to say, I wanted to say to add on to um, what Jeff said, which I agreed with, um, there is, so I don't know if, uh, I guess a lot of our audience probably saw the movie uh, uh, Ant-Man, the uh, Marvel movie, and there's a thing where they, they go into the quantum verse, and in the quantum verse, physics don't apply, and like all the rules of like how things should work are backwards or upside down. I think that's the case when you're talking about sub five billion dollar market cap stocks that Great catch point. the the interest of of meme traders in uh you know on message boards um and this is not new and My mike santoli referred to this as With an echo of 2020 yeah of 2021 but that, like we we had meme stocks in 1997 1998 when i was a teenager and i first started trading we had i omega it was the first message board darling stock. There were millions of people in America fixated on this little $5 stock that they ran up to $30. Um, it was like a tech stock. It was small. It was easy to manipulate. There wasn't a lot of coverage from Wall Street analysts. Um, and it became a plaything. And it went on for months. Uh, and Herb Greenberg was writing columns about it. So like that's, tw uh, what is that, 25 years ago? So this is just something that can periodically happen and the spark could be anything, which is why an analyst covering something like Bed Bath & Beyond using discounted cash flow, it's a joke. The last thing I'll say is there's a degree of what George Soros calls reflexivity in these particular stocks. AMC is a really great example. These stocks can, the, the, the um, enthusiasm for these stocks can create an alternate reality that becomes the actual reality. So in the case of AMC, they were able to sell so much additional stock to the public, which, by the way, they're going to do it again, that they saved the company. This was a zero if it hadn't become a darling of the trade. So the traders who, who got involved with AMC actually are the reason that AMC is not in Chapter 11 and, and the stock still exists. So that's a really interesting component as well. So let's say Bed Bath & Beyond is bleeding cash. Sure. I, don't, I don't look at the balance sheet. I'm, I, I assume it is. Um, if they can keep this stock levitating long enough to drop a spot secondary or do a rights offering or, or, or a pipe or something, they actually can reverse some of the problems plaguing the company and change its very reality. So when you're in an environment like that, it's, it's the quantum verse. Throw out a lot of what you think you know about why stocks go up and down and just accept the fact that traders can assert right. a powerful force that has physical impact in the real world.